Welcome to Auto Guild. In this video, I'm going to tell you the 29 reasons why the LS engine is so much better than the small block Chevy. Let's get started. Reason number one, block weight. The aluminum block on the LS is about 75 pounds lighter than the iron block on the small block Chevy. The small block Chevy iron block is a little bit lighter than the LS iron block, but I'm going to show you in number two why the LS iron block is still so much better. So back to the aluminum block. There are other advantages with the aluminum that you don't get with the iron. It dissipates heat much better than iron does. So this will require you to have a smaller radiator. And remember, this 75 pounds is just for the block. There are other things about the LS that make it lighter, and we'll talk about those coming up. Reason number two, power handling. A stock aluminum LS block can handle 700 horsepower. A stock iron block can handle a thousand horsepower. The small block Chevy early engines can handle about 360 and about 550 or so for the newer engines from the 80s. If you like this kind of detailed information, please hit the like button and think about subscribing. Reason number three, skirted block. As you can see, the bottom of the LS engine, the sides go all the way down equal to the bearing caps. On the small block Chevy engine, you can see the bearing caps are just kind of hanging down there on their own. So this extra material on the bottom of the LS block makes it much more rigid and much stronger. Number four, main bearing caps. Some of you may remember the small block Chevy has either a two bolt main or a four bolt main. Well get this, the LS engine, every single engine is a six bolt main. Not only are there four bolts coming down from the bottom, but there are actually two bolts coming from the sides through the block. Item number five, the valley plate cover. This is a separate cast aluminum piece that bolts on top of the block that simplifies cylinder head insulation and also seals in the heat of the engine which makes the intake air colder. Number six, crankshaft. A stock LS crankshaft can handle almost a thousand horsepower. With the small block Chevy, you're limited to about 350 horsepower to 375 for the early cranks and maybe about 425 horsepower for the later one-piece rear main seal cranks. Number seven, oil pan. The LS engine uses a rigid cast aluminum oil pan that's actually a stressed member of the engine. It's much less likely to flex and therefore leak. It's also quieter because it's thicker. The small black Chevy used a stamped steel and relatively flimsy oil pan which also tended to rust. Number eight, the pistons. The LS uses hyper-eutectic alloy pistons, which are high in silicone content. They're good for about 550 horsepower. These pistons expand less with heat, so this gives you two benefits. You have tighter tolerances, which keeps more power in the cylinder for better efficiency, and also reduces the wear. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video, where I'm going to tell you what the horsepower difference will be if you build two identical engines, one LS and one small block. Number nine, piston rings. LS has smaller, thinner, and lighter piston rings, which allows for a smaller piston. This just makes for less friction and makes everything more efficient. And the Gen 5 LT engines use even thinner rings yet. The piston rings are also made from a more modern, high carbon material compared to the traditional Molly rings of the small block Chevy. Reason number 10, the connecting rods. The LS uses powdered metal connecting rods, which are good for about 500 to 700 horsepower, depending on the RPM. The old small block Chevy used die forged steel rods, which are good for about 480 horsepower for the more recent small block Chevy engines and less for the older ones. Also note that all LS engines have these same style connecting rods, except for the LS7, which use titanium. Number 11, cylinder heads. I've spoken about cylinder heads on this channel before. The cylinder heads are the magic of the LS engine. I don't want to get in too much details on the cylinder heads. If you want me to do a dedicated cylinder head video, let me know in the comments and I will. They flow better. They've had decades of time to have improvements over the old small block heads. The spark plug location is better. The chamber design is improved for a better burn. The heads even have steam vents in them to prevent air pockets in the cooling system. So that allows GM to run higher compression ratios, which of course leads to more power. The best small block Chevy cylinder heads are not as good as the worst LS head. Finally, I want to add the weight of the heads. 
Almost all small block Chevy engines came with cast iron, which weigh 45 pounds each, and almost all LS engines came with aluminum heads, which weigh 30 pounds. Intake design. The LS engine uses a modern thermoplastic composite intake manifold as opposed to iron or aluminum of the small block Chevy. Of course, it's a more modern design, it flows better, but it's also separated from the engine. So the air flowing in has less heat soak from the hot engine below it. So the air charge coming in is colder, which means more horsepower. Number 13, camshaft design. The LS engine uses a larger diameter camshaft which creates a smoother approach for the lobe of the camshaft so the valve opening and closing can be smoother. So you can run a higher lift valve without having really abrupt changes in the camshaft profile. The second benefit of the LS camshaft design is that it's hollow. So it revs faster because it's a little bit lighter and just takes a little bit of weight off the front of the engine. Number 14, roller lifters. All LS engines have factory equipped roller lifters. And this is something that GM didn't add to the small block Chevy until 1987. Number 15, rocker arm ratio. The LS has a 1.7 to 1 ratio versus the small block Chevy's 1.5. Not only that, but the stock LS rocker arms are stiffer and lighter than the small block rockers. So increasing the ratio is kind of like installing a higher lift camshaft. Also note that the 1.7 ratio is the same as the big block Chevy and the LS7 LS is actually 1.8 as is the new Gen 5 LT engine. Number 16, rocker cradle. The LS has stud mounted rockers but with a rocker cradle. The small block Chevy just has stud mounted rockers. So the benefits of the rocker cradle is it increases rigidity on the pivot point of the rocker and just allows for higher RPM, more stability and higher spring pressures. Number 17, beehive springs. The LS uses these beehive springs which are narrower at the top. This reduces valve train weight and it also creates kind of a variable spring rate effect which reduces harmonics and allows the spring to perform really well with just a single spring. Also, the benefit of having the top narrower is now the spring retainer is smaller and lighter which allows the engine to rev faster and a higher RPM. Number 18, camshaft replacement. The LS uses lifter guides or trays which allow you to swap out the cam without having to remove the cylinder heads or intake manifold or anything like that, that like you had to do with the small block Chevy. Number 19, exhaust manifolds. The small block Chevy had smaller, more restrictive exhaust manifolds that tended to have poor flow characteristics and direction of flow. The LS is much more like a header it has very smooth characteristics, larger port openings, larger exhaust system openings, and unless you're planning to put out big numbers, you really don't need to upgrade to headers with these exhaust manifolds in many cases. It should be clear by now is that it's not one thing that makes the LS engine great. It's all of these improvements that have happened in all these different areas that make it so amazing. Number 20 are the gaskets on the LS. They're one piece rubber with an aluminum insert and they're reusable. Very different from the old small block Chevy gasket, especially the intake manifold that's shown here. Those little pieces that would go on the end, oh my God, those things were like the devil. Number 21, the maximum RPM. The small block Chevy was limited to around 5,800 RPM from the factory. The LS is good for up to 6,600 RPM right out of the factory. Please hit the thumbs up and think about subscribing. Number 22, the serpentine belt on the LS. This is very different from the old V-belts that the small block Chevy used up until the mid 80s. The serpentine system is more reliable. You only have one belt. It has a built-in tensioner, so less adjustment is needed. And it's easy to replace too. You just relieve the pressure of the tensioner and take it off. It takes about five seconds. The tensioner load is also preset, so you never have to worry about like you did with the old V-belts of them being too tight and prematurely wearing out your bearings. The V-belts also had a tendency to slip, as they stretched out or even come off at high RPM. Number 23, electronic fuel injection. Fuel injection is more reliable. It has a more accurate air to fuel ratio, gives you better fuel economy, fewer emissions. It's better with cold and hot starting. You don't need to rejet for different altitudes. You can make adjustments using a computer. It has a built-in rev limiter. Number 24, the LS sensors. 
LS being an electronic fuel injection engine has all kinds of different sensors to help with everything. This makes the engine produce more power, be more efficient, be more reliable. If you're interested, I have a complete list of those sensors down in the description below. Number 25, coil on plug. The LS has no distributor. The ignition is completely computer controlled. The small box Chevy, of course, had a distributor with a point system and later a high energy electronic HEI ignition system. But all of those had parts that wore out and required maintenance. The benefit of coil on plug is no moving parts. There's less voltage loss because the coil is sitting right on top of the plug. There's just a short little connector, no wires. There's no air gap between the rotor and the cap. And ignition timing can be much more precisely controlled for more power, better response, and lower emissions because the computer's doing it and it can fire it at the optimal time. And each spark plug, as I mentioned, has its own dedicated coil. And I know some of your old school diehards were gonna say, oh, well, it's more expensive to fix. And yeah, that's true. If something does break, it is more expensive to fix, but there's much fewer parts and the repairs are less frequent because it's more reliable. Number 26, the engine control module. This is one of the most important components found on any new vehicle. The ECM takes all the information from all the engine's various sensors and then it uses that information to calculate and tune the engine spark and fuel delivery for maximum power and efficiency. The ECU knows when it's cold outside. It knows if you're at a higher elevation. It knows if the engine's running hot. It knows if you got a tank of bad gas. It knows. Number 27, variable valve timing. This is available on some LS engines. This changes the valve timing of the engine. The engine's just an air pump, and as it increases in speed, its efficiency changes. And the variable valve timing will open and close the valves at different times depending on different speeds. Without variable valve timing, you have to go for torquey low-end power or high RPM, high horsepower you had to make a compromise. VVT gives you both. It gives you low end torque and high end RPM power and better fuel economy. And it does this by rotating the camshaft, usually around 20 degrees or so, to change the timing of the valves as needed. Again, with variable valve timing, you're gonna come across the crusty old dudes who are like, oh, first thing you gotta do is get rid of that, take it out of your vehicle. Don't listen to them. Check out the Super Chevy article that I've linked down below. You can add a camshaft to variable valve timing to gain massive amounts of horsepower and keep all that low end torque at the same time. Number 28, horsepower. Take a small block Chevy and an LS with about the same displacement and about the same camshaft and mostly OEM parts, you're gonna see about 100 more horsepower out of the LS. I've got a great hot rod article linked in the description below that talks about it in more detail. Number 29, availability. The LS engines are everywhere now. You can pick them up on eBay, Craigslist, Junkyard. If you're looking for more information on the LS engine, don't miss my ultimate LS engine overview. It gives a complete history of every single LS engine. That's up there on the left. If you're looking for a specific LS engine that fits your budget, Check out my best LS engine for any budget. Click on those right now. Thanks for visiting Auto Guild and good luck with your project.